In 2004, the broadcast in the Netherlands of this film submission, criticizing the treatment of women in traditional Islam, led to the murder of Dutch director Theo van Gogh. The Islamic radical who killed van Gogh left a note pinned to the body with a knife that named the writer of the film, Somali-born Ayan Hirsi Ali, as his next intended victim. Ali was then a member of the Dutch parliament and a critic of fundamentalist Islam, whose books include The Caged Virgin, an emancipation proclamation for women and Islam. After repeated death threats, Ali resigned from the Dutch parliament last year and moved to the United States. She spoke to VOA recently, explaining how the 9-11 terror attacks led her to become what she calls a Muslim atheist. I got into a conflict of conscience. Do I agree what is done in the name of the Quran, because that's what bin Laden and Muhammad Atta quoted? Do I agree with my God, or do I disagree? And if I disagree, I know I'm running hell. And so I had to work that out fast. But many Muslims responded to that, uh, to 9-11, by saying they did it in the name of the Quran, but they were wrong. This is not Islam. Well, they were wrong, and the act of killing people indiscriminately is wrong. We agree on all that. But the quotations from the Quran are in there. And I, my approach is it doesn't change anything if you close your eyes to the facts. And we can only prevent other young people from subscribing to the wrong quotations from the Quran if we accept that those urges towards violence and domination are in the Quran and then try and reform that and change that. That's my approach. However, rather than uh, reform it, you found that you were no longer a believer at all? Well, I decided, first of all, and it's a very private decision, it's I'm not propagating atheism, but I decided that I do not believe in the existence of a hell and a heaven and a hereafter because honestly I realized that was the biggest fear that I had to face when I wanted, when I got into this conflict of conscience. So in order to be in a good place in the hereafter, to go to heaven, I did not dare um, challenge God. And what I did was I decided to challenge what's written in the Quran by saying, I do not wish to be a part of a killing spree. I do not wish uh, to be a part of domination. I, I want uh, to live and I want others to live. And I love life and I love life on earth. So that's something that I relinquished for myself. But I do not propagate that every Muslim become an atheist. You've been very critical, though, of Islam and even of the Prophet. Yes, the Prophet Muhammad said that he is an example to us throughout. So not only in the 7th and 8th centuries, but in the 21st century. Humanity has moved on. And we can use the Prophet Muhammad as an example in all the things that I think are morally sound, such as hospitality, such as being kind to the poor and the elderly. But I do not want to follow the Prophet Muhammad as an example when he says, kill the unbelievers, ambush them and take their property. Disobedient wives should be beaten. Um, when he divides the world into believers and unbelievers, I do not want to follow the Prophet Muhammad in that sort of morality. So you wouldn't take everything that he says literally, but rather metaphorically the way some Unitarians do? <laughs> the way some Unitarians do. You can say you can, you can take it metaphorically. You can also say, I'm going to see some of his conduct, such as marrying a nine-year-old child in the context of the morality of the seventh century in that part of the world. We've moved on now, and we can say we are not going to judge the Prophet Muhammad's morality in hindsight, but we are not going to follow that morality. And if you look at all the Arab countries, all the Muslim countries, where little girls are married off to older men, they all justify it as that's the way the Prophet did it, and I'm following it in the example of the Prophet. And yet somehow many good people who are Muslims somehow are able to reconcile that, maybe by not simply not thinking about the literal fact of that marriage to a nine-year-old, and it would be very painful to them to hear you criticize you know, the, the person whom they revere more than anything. I understand that. 
But let's empathize with a nine-year-old child living in Saudi Arabia or in Jordan or in Sudan who is being raped night in, night out by someone who is 20 to 30 years older than she is and say, and that man justifies his act in the name of the Prophet. I do not want to insult or offend fellow Muslims. I just want to say, if we want to change inhuman practices practiced in the name of our faith, then the only way to go about it is to say, we will look at those who are suffering. And it's the young woman who's being raped. It's the Jewish minorities who are being uh, oppressed or the Christian minorities. We want to stand up for our own rights here in countries where Christians and non-Muslims are a majority. And we are succeeding in that. But when you look at Muslim countries, Arab Muslim countries, look at the way they treat minorities. And that's all done in the name of our faith. I'm just asking for equal moral standards. Let's judge ourselves as we judge others. How did you come to write this, this screenplay for a submission, which led to the death of, of your director? Dear um, I, I was challenged that um, the Quran says only wonderful things about women. And I thought, I, I, I was brought up with the Quran, so I know exactly what the Quran says, and I could find those particular verses in which God, for example, tells husbands, when you fear misconduct, warn your wives, leave them alone in bed and beat them. And there were imams in Spain and in France and in Holland and in England who were preaching from the mosques and who were saying, be disobedient wives. And so I took verses like those and had them written on women's bodies, actresses, who then depicted the image of a woman who is, for example, beaten, one who is raped. And um, that was to show this is how it looks like. To you, it's a holy verse. But when it's carried out, this is what it looks like. And uh, the man who killed Theo van Gogh killed him because he thought the verse was so holy. These were such holy verses. And they were written so great and so elevated. And they were written on a surface so low. Women. And that was such an insult to God and to the Quran that the man who directed and who made this needed to be killed. When we talk about a clash of civilizations, it's not a clash of civilizations. It's this clash. It's a clash of values. And it's this sort of mindset, the value that says a holy text is far more important than a human life that I fight. Writer Ayan Hirsi Ali is now a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. She spoke to VOA during a trip to New York. Carolyn Weaver, VOA News.